10.02, we will resume with land use hearings. County Manager. Yes, we have uh, one land use item this morning. Uh, it's RCU 2014-0024. It's a residential conditional use permit with the with the Hay, and uh, our planning staff, Emily Collins, will be here to talk through that. Thank you. I'm on. Good morning. So this is Hay, RCU 2014-2014. Dash 24. So this is a conditional use permit for a second dwelling unit, a mobile home on 35 acres in the A3 zone district. Here's an overview of our site outlined in blue. It is on 104th Avenue between Manila Road and Schumacher Road. Previous requests on this site include uh, building permits for the existing single family dwelling as well as the 60 by 40 pole barn. The well permit on file also authorizes a domestic use for up to three dwellings. So the site is approximately 35 acres, A3 agricultural, and has the existing single family home and pole barn. As I mentioned before, it's on 104th Avenue between Manila and Schumacher Road. The surrounding area is also composed of A3 and A2 zone properties. The comprehensive plan designates the subject's property in the surrounding area as agricultural. The site is also located in the airport noise overlay. The zone district includes all land heavily impacted by the noise created by low-flying aircraft. All uses permitted by the underlying zone, dis zone district, A3 in this case, as permitted uses or as conditional uses are also permitted in the ANO. This request is for a temporary residential unit and is not a request for a new residential rezoning. Existing residential uses, such as the dwelling unit on the property, are considered legal nonconforming. The conditional use permit for the second dwelling unit is being requested in order to accommodate the applicant's son as a permanent caretaker for his father who suffered a stroke in 2010. Landon Hay has been providing caregiver services for Greg Hay over the last few years via the State of Colorado CDASS program. The applicant stated Mr. Hay needs constant care and Landon will be able to supplement the third party caregiver services already provided. The applicant is asking for a temporary 20 year approval for the mobile home unit, after which time the applicant would either remove the mobile home or reapply for a new conditional use permit. The request does not change the current A3 zoning on the property and would only change the number of permitted dwelling units. This request is also consistent with the Adams County Development Standards and Regulations, which allows for additional dwellings under Section 3-10-4-2 permitted conditional residential uses. The proposed mobile home would be located to the southeast of the existing home on the property, which is set back approximately 278 feet from 104th Avenue. The site plan does not disclose the exact locations of uh, the second dwelling. However, it would be set back at least the 278 feet from the north property line and approximately 167 feet from the east property line. The property has a single well and a single individual sewage disposal system. Tri-County Health Department recommends that the mobile home connect into the existing on-site wastewater treatment system and obtain a use permit through their department. The Denver International Airport stated they do not object to the conditional use permit. However, if the Hayes decide to sell this property prior to 20 years, the mobile home should be removed. Excel Energy had no conflicts. The Colorado Department of Water Resources stated that according to the records, the well permit was approved for domestic purposes inside three single family dwellings. However, their office does not have a record of well construction and test report and requested that the applicant submit proof of well completion. The Adams County Transportation Department requests an additional 10 feet of right of way along 104th Avenue. Staff received one citizen comment from Rodney and Sherry Mills <clears throat> with concerns about the mobile home unit being used for a rental income property, not as a caregiver home, concerns about the overall size, placement, and type of unit, and worries about multiple dwelling trends for the future of this area. The applicant, the applicant responded that the son has not always lived at this location and as an adult deserves his own home. Additionally, Mr. Hayes' primary caregiver works 40 hours or less per week while Mrs. Hayes is at work and therefore needs backup caregivers. The applicant states having their son in close proximity allows Mr. Hay to remain at home instead of staying permanently at a nursing facility. So again, here's an overview aerial of the site outlined in blue. Here is a close up of the property. So I'll just switch back here. Um, the citizen comment came from the property to the east here in between, and they are referring to their concerns where this middle property that currently has um, a mobile home and a single family. And staff did research this site, and this mobile home unit was permitted um, prior to 2002 when the regulations changed, um, which would have required the conditional use permit as per today's request. So 
Um, and again, this is the site outlined here, pole barn, and the existing house. Um, this map shows the neighbors that were sent um, a request for support from the applicant. Um, this property right next door to the east did send in a letter of support to the applicant. Here's the site plan submitted by the applicant, which again shows the existing um, units and then the proposed site for the mobile home. So here we have some aerial views. This is looking south on 104th into the property. So again, the barn and the house. It's looking south, another view. So the mobile home unit would be approximately in this location. Here we're looking southwest. This is looking directly south. And there is a semi-truck trailer on the property and there is a condition um, that this shall be removed and evidence submitted to the department. So this is looking west on 104th. This is looking directly east. This is northeast. This is north directly across the street. Northwest. Staff is of the opinion that the impact of a second dwelling unit mobile home would not detract from the intent and character of the A3 agricultural zone district. A second dwelling would have minimal impact on the surrounding neighborhood. The Planning Commission previously heard this case on December 11, 2014 and recommended unanimous approval with an amendment to condition two for a 10 year expiration date of January 20th, 2025 rather than a 20 year expiration date. The applicant did not have any concerns with the staff report. The applicant was asked about the status of proof of well completion, the proposed size of the mobile home unit, and why they requested a 20 year approval. Applicants stated they currently have a working well and are in progress of providing proof to the State Division of Water Resources. The applicant also stated the size of the unit is undetermined as they are waiting to see if they received approval first and that the 20 years was just a general guide and they are satisfied with the 10 year approval instead. No public testimony was presented at the hearing. Staff is recommending approval with eight findings of fact, five conditions precedent, two conditions, and one note. And that concludes the staff report. Thank you very much. Commissioners, do we have any questions for staff? Seeing no questions for staff, would the applicant like to make a statement? Is the applicant here? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Scary I know, <laughs> you're all sitting up so high. I know. I know. Did not have anything to do with that design. <laughs> it's a little intimidating. Right? Yeah, true. I think she pretty much could. Ma'am, could you, could, if you would like to make a statement, could you please step to the microphone and state your name and address for the record? I'm Kathy Hay, and I'm at 41344 East 104th Avenue, Bennett, Colorado. I don't have anything to add unless you have some questions for me. Commissioners, do we have any questions for the applicant? I do. Commissioner Rodericio. You're okay with the 10 year? Yes. Okay. And um, what we had said previously in the public hearing was that Greg is 63. Um, while his health is good, um, I think 10 is reasonable. And if he survives past that, then we would look at doing a, a new submittal. So. And uh, you, you have no intention. It looks like that you're okay with all the conditions that say that the property shall not be leased in the future. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, one of those conditions states that it shall only be used by uh, fam yourselves or your son. Correct. Is there ever a chance that you might need a different caregiver for that particular location that you well, would not lease to, but perhaps may need to expand that to allow a different caregiver? Through the program that we're under right now, um, we are, we hi I hire caregivers and I can't imagine I'd ever have one live in that mobile home. That is really solely for Landon. That was the whole tent, and that would, I would never want anybody else to live there, honestly. That's right. I would remove that if Landon moved. But um, he does have a primary caregiver. Landon is the backup. Um, I, don't, I don't foresee that ever changing. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No other questions. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to make public comment on this subject? Seeing none, do we have a motion? I move for the approval with eight findings of fact, five conditions, conditions, presidents, two conditions, and one note. Second. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Odoricio? Yes. Commissioner Hansen? Okay. Commissioner Pulaski? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. 
Thank you very much. And I believe seeing no further land use hearings, we are adjourned.